Oxford Bookworms, Stage 2, Ireland, by Tim Vickery. Chapter 1, Ireland's Story. There are many different islands. One island is a country with beautiful high mountains, big empty beaches, long deep rivers. People go there to fish and swim and walk. They love Ireland because it is so quiet and because the Irish people are so nice and friendly. Another island is a country of stories and music. Most Irish people can sing and many famous musicians are Irish. A lot of the most famous writers in the English language are Irish too. But some people in Ireland speak only or mostly Irish. Now look again at Ireland. It is not only a quiet, beautiful, friendly place. It is also a country of blood, bombs and death. Between 1968 and 1998, thousands of people in Northern Ireland died. But most Irish people are not interested in bombs and guns. What is Ireland really like? What can you see there? And what happened hundreds of years ago in Irish history? Turn the page to begin reading Ireland's story. Chapter 2 Around the Island Ireland is an island like a plate. It is higher on the outside than in the centre. Because of this, the centre of Ireland is full of beautiful lakes and rivers, and many people go there to fish and sail. Ireland's largest lake is Loch Ney. Its longest river, the Shannon, is 260 kilometres long. It goes through many small lakes and two large ones, Loch Ri and Loch Derg. Most of Ireland's mountains are near the outside of the plate, near the sea. They are not very high. The highest is Carantool, 1,040 metres, in the southwest. But they are beautiful and good places for walks. At the cliffs of Moha in the west, you can look 200 metres straight down into the sea. The giant's causeway in the north is made of strange rocks, two metres tall, with six sides. There are hundreds of small islands in the sea around Ireland. On the Aran Islands in the west, most people speak Irish, not English. Life has changed very little here in a hundred years. Much of the north and west of Ireland is very beautiful. There are hundreds of flowers in the green fields, and there are wonderful beaches and lakes called lochs in Ireland. The weather is warm and wet, with rain and sun nearly every day. But it is hard to farm here, because of the rocks and mountains. The centre and east of Ireland are very different. The land is good here, and Irish milk and meat are some of the best in the world. Farming is one of the most important jobs in Ireland. Thousands of horses live here too. Some of the best horses in the world come from Ireland, and Irish people sell horses to Britain, America, Australia and Japan. People go to watch horse races in many Irish towns, and in Laytown, north of Dublin, there are horse races along the beach every September. All Ireland's important cities, Dublin, Belfast, Derry, Galway, Limerick, Cork and Waterford are near the sea. 
If we look at Ireland's history, we will see why. Chapter three: Celtic Ireland. The Irish are a Celtic people. Thousands of years ago, the Celts came to Ireland from Western France and Northern Spain. They loved singing, and horses, and stories, and they made beautiful gold and silver jewelry. Many men wore gold rings round their necks. And arms. A Greek writer, Diodorus Siculus, wrote this about the Celts: "The Celts are tall and strong. They wear colorful shirts and trousers. Before they fight, they hit their long swords on their shields and shout with loud voices. They are very good fighters. When a Celt kills a man." He cuts off his head, and puts it above the door of his house. Finn McCool was a famous Celtic fighter. There are many stories about Finn and his men, the Fianna. When he was a boy, he cooked a fish on a fire. This fish knew everything about the world. Finn touched the hot fish with his finger. And put his finger in his mouth. Then he knew everything about the world too. I know what is going to happen tomorrow, he said. Another famous Celt was Cúhulín. Cúhulín's father had a brother called Connor, who was king of Ulster, in the north of Ireland. Connor had a big, dangerous dog. Which killed many men. Cúhulín liked to play a Celtic game called hurling. In hurling, the players can carry a small hard ball in their hands, and also hit it with a stick. One day, when Cúhulín was a boy, Connor called everyone into his house to eat, but Cúhulín and his friends. Wanted to finish their game of hurling, so they stayed outside. Connor's dog came out of the house, attacked the young boys, and tried to kill them. But Coo Hulin hit the hurling ball into the dog's mouth, and then killed it with his stick. A big fighting dog is called a hound, and so after this, Coo Hulin was called. The Hound of Ulster. Celtic games like hurling are very popular in Ireland today. Irish people play the Celtic game called Gaelic football. In Gaelic football, the players can use their feet and hands. Celtic stories and music are popular too. There are many Celtic rock bands. One of them is called Finn McCool, and some people in Ireland speak the Celtic language called Irish. Irish is very different from English. For example, the Irish for tree is crown, and the word for woman is ban. But Celtic people in Wales, Scotland, Western France. And northern Spain have languages very like Irish. A hundred years ago, Irish was nearly a dead language. Most Irish people spoke English, and only the poor people in the west of Ireland spoke Irish. No one taught Irish in schools. Most Irish people speak English today too. But many children learn Irish at school, and many older people in Dublin and Belfast learn it too. They can listen to the Irish language radio station, Radio Na Gaeltacha, and watch Irish language television on TG4. The Irish language is popular again. Chapter Four. 
St. Patrick, the Church and the Vikings. In 401, some Irishmen came to Britain. They took many people back to Ireland and sold them. One of these people was Patrick, who was only 16. For six years, young Patrick worked with sheep on a farm. Then, when he was 22, he ran away to France. He learned about God from monks at a school in a French monastery. In 432, he went back to Ireland to teach the Irish about God. The Irish kings listened to him, and he built an important church in Armagh. A hundred years later, Ireland was one of the most important Christian countries in Europe, with beautiful churches and monasteries everywhere. Irish writers wrote famous, important books, like the Book of Kells, which you can see in Dublin today. And there are pictures of St. Patrick in many Irish churches. Another Irish churchman, called Brendan, sailed to Scotland, Iceland, Greenland and America in a small leather boat. Some people said that this was not possible. But in 1976, an Englishman, Tim Severin, built a leather boat called Brendan and sailed it from Ireland to Iceland and America. You can see the Brendan at Craganoan in County Clare in the west of Ireland. There were many beautiful, expensive things in the Irish churches and monasteries, and Norwegian Vikings came to Ireland to steal them and kill the monks. Because of this, the monks built tall, round towers beside their monasteries. When the Vikings came, the monks ran into the towers to hide. You can see these towers in Irish villages today. One of the most interesting Irish monasteries is on Skellig Michael. It is an island in the Atlantic, 16 kilometres southwest of Ireland. It is a beautiful, windy place. The island is 240 metres high, and in bad weather, no boats can get there. There is no danger here, the Irish monks thought, but they were wrong. In 824, Vikings came in their longships to attack Skellig Michael too. But some Vikings came to Ireland to stay. They built towns by the sea, Dublin, Cork, Waterford and Limerick. The Celts liked to live in the country, but the Vikings lived in towns. Some of the Vikings married Celts and learned the Celtic language. The Vikings came to the north of Ireland too. One day, two different Viking ships came to a beautiful place in Ulster. Both groups of Vikings wanted to stay there and build a town. But there were too many of them. The two groups of Vikings looked at each other angrily. We must fight, said a Viking from the first ship. The winners will live and keep the land, and the losers will die. No, said a man from the second ship. I have a better idea. Let's race to the beach in our ships. The first man who holds the land in his hand can keep it. His people can stay, and the others must leave. So the two ships raced towards the beach. One man stood at the front of each ship, ready to jump down to the beach. Then one ship went in front of the other. The man in the first ship looked back at the second ship and laughed. We're going to win, he said. 
This land will belong to us. No, it won't, said the man in the second ship angrily. You will never win. Never! Suddenly, he took out his sword and cut off his hand with it. Then he threw the hand over the heads of the men in the first ship. The hand fell on the beach and its bloody fingers closed on the land. This is our land, said the man with one hand. It will never belong to you. Never, never, never. That is the story of the Red Hand of Ulster. You can see the Red Hand on the flags of Northern Ireland. To learn why it is so important, we need to learn a little more about Irish history.